Patek Tov. Patek Tov. A good no. A good ticket. A good verdict. That's the greeting for this particular day, the seventh day of the Feast of Tabernacles, the Feast of Ingathering, the Feast of Booths, otherwise known as Sukkot, this particular day. Now, this particular year, 2011, Sukkot has occurred on this day. This day, this day is the whole Sha'ina Rabbah which is in the West, or the Gregorian calendar, is the 19th day of October. But now, according to the Hebraic, it is from the 15th day to this, the 21st, to this 20, uh, first day. Now, why is this day in particular so important, the 21st day of Tishrei? It's because in the seventh day of the Hebrew holy day of Sukkot, the 21st day of Tishrei, which is known as Hosha'ina, Hosha'ina, Rabba, and we've touched on this right here, explained this briefly in part one. Now, let's just conclude with um, Leviticus chapter 23. And we're at Leviticus chapter 23, verse 42, where it says, Ye shall dwell in booths seven days, and all that are Israelites born, all that are Israelites born, shall dwell in booths. That, verse 43, that your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Gibbet, out of the land of Egypt. I am Yahweh, your Elohim. Verse 44, And Musa, Moshe, Mashu, declared to the children of Israel the feast of the Lord, the feast of yod heh wow -Hey, as we too must declare to this generation the feast of the King of Kings, and his Christ. So this particular day is the Hosha'ina Rabba. But what is the Hosha'ina Rabba? And what is the significance both in the Belui Kidan, the Old Covenant, as well as in this uh, Hadith Kidan, and according to Ras Tefari revelation? Well, first of all, the Hosha'ina Rabba, it means the great Hosha'ina the great supplication. Now, this day, this particular day is marked by a special synagogue, and we call our synagogues Bamarinya, the Mikurab, the Mikurab, the Mikurab, the Mikurab. So this is marked by a special Mikurab Agelgelot. The Agelgelot is the service. The Hosha'ina Araba in which seven circuits are made by the mitmenah, by the faithful, by the worshippers, with their lulav and etrog. Now the lulav and the etrog are certain types of um, certain types of trees. The, the the willows. Some call it the beating of the willows, and hopefully we'll touch on that. While the congregation while the rest of the Machiber, the Machiber or the society or the association, but we say the congregation in English and Bamarinya, the Machiber, that is the word that translates also as society, recites what is known as the Hoshanot, the Hoshanot. Now, the Hoshanot are, are special. Uh, supplications, special supplications. Now we as Ethiopian Hebrews also have our special supplications and I hope, hopefully you have your pen and your paper, my brothers and sisters, and especially the disciples. Take this down. Um, the Kibber and the Guest, the Queen of Sheba and Only Son, Minulik, Chapter 107. Now, 
here many of y'all probably are familiar with this or, sh or should be familiar with this this is the uh, Samantawi Sendet Orit Neba. This is our Sabbath house readings. This contains our Sabbath house readings. Now, one particular brother, I think it's Iconic Music, made a comment about um, the past uh, Sabbath uh, reading. And I believe that they were reading um, the first sabbatical reading. And that won't occur until the Simchat Torah or yeah, yeah, orit desita, yeah, orit desita, the joy of the Torah. And this occurs within the next couple of days, the next couple of days, brothers and sisters. So when I saw the comment from Iconic Music, it reminded me that more teaching needed to be done on our holy days and on this particular document right here which contains our Sabbath house readings. It's very important because when the holy days come around and if you turn to page 8 of this document, going to page 8, you will find this particular page right here, page 8. And on page 8 it says additional parashiot for holidays, for the holy days. Now the parashiot is the Hebraic plural of parasha. Parasha means portion. Now, we either say minbab or nibab, which means reading, or for portion, we can say kufal, the Sabbath kufal, and the kufal as in kufale, kufale. Kufale also could apply, but is speaking to multiple, in that sense, divisions or portions, as the Book of Jubilees is known as the Metafe Kufale, the Ethiopic Book of Jubilees. Now, if you look at this, there's four columns. There is the Parashat, which is the reading. There's the Torah, the first column, or the second column now. And then the third is the Haftarah, or the um, prophetical, the Nabiya, prophetical readings, and the last is the Burt, or the Burret Hadasha, the Burret Hadasha, and the Burret Hadasha is the New Covenant, or the Adis Kidan. Now, if you look at it, it begins with Rosh Hashanah. Now, Hashanah and uh, Hoshana, or Hosha'ina, more correctly, Hosha'ina, are not cognates of one another. So, some from an English perspective may see or imagine a similarity. Rosh Hashanah, the word Hashanah, and Hosha'inah, Hosha'inah are, are liu liu, are different. They are not temesasai. They're not similar or the same. So just a point needs to be made about that. Now, it says Rosh Hashanah, day one, day two, the Shabbat uh, Shuvah, then um, Yom Kippur, the Shacharit, and the Minka, the evening, the morning and the evening um, worship. Then the Sukkot, we have Sukkot 1, 2. Then Sukkot Chaim, 1, 2, 3, 4. Then we have the Sukkot uh, Shabbat, the Sukkot Shabbat, which would have been appropriate for the past um, Shabbat as, as, as well. Um, then there's additional Sukkot Shabbat as well. Now, more traditionally, this time, these two days right now, this particular day, seeing that this is the, the seventh day, and if we look into the scriptures, it says that this feast would be a feast to Yahweh for seven days for seven days, and says on the first shall be a Shabbat, a Sabbath, and on the eighth, and this is the Shemeni Atzeret, which is really for tomorrow, and so we thought it was important, and hopefully we'll be able to upload these particular teachings on the Hosha'ina Araba, which is this particular day, and brothers and sisters, um, this means that we're not beginning off the Torah portions from the beginning. This is what we will do on the Simchat Torah, the Simchat Torah. And the Simchat Torah, if you continue to look at this, you'll see there is 
three more. There's a Hoshana, Hosha'ina, Araba, and we're now on page nine of the Sabbath house readings. So this is what we said we needed to teach. Um, what is the order and what is the process or procedures for us when holy days and also we have to learn how to calculate the holy days. Remember the holy days and Yahweh's clock and even his calendar is the heavens. And this is from the very beginning. He points out the heavens for signs and seasons and days and years. So it's important. Now we live in um, a society or a general Gentile or system that is as different than our Hebrew way of life as day is from night. So it, it, it'd be challenging at first because the first thing one has to do is to first of all learn. And, and this is why we try to be patient and diligent and even go into some um, detailed matters because it might not make full sense at first or put, put it into the proper perspective. But as we begin to do, as we begin to do, and I give thanks for you brothers and sisters who are studying with us and also studying, taking personal responsibility and studying on your own. Now, although this is a particular holy time that if we were more versed and knowledgeable, we could really um, experience it more fully. Right now we are scattered, we are separated, and we're not, even with Sukkot, we hadn't had the opportunity to, to build Sukkot. But see, some of these um, pilgrim festivals and, and, and feasts take place in the, the land, take place in our African Zion and in the New Jerusalem. They take place in the land. And the word also points that out as well. So for us, especially in the diaspora, it's important to remember, to remember as remembering the Sabbath and keeping it holy, remembering not just the weekly Sabbaths, but the annual Sabbaths. And these holy days comprise our annual Sabbaths. So now when you look on page 9 of our Sabbath house readings, you'll find the Hoshana Rabbah, the Shemeni uh, Atzeret, and the Simchat Torah, the Simchat Torah. Now, this today is the Hosha'ina Araba, today, which in the West, in 2011, would be October, uh, October 19th. So since it's lunar in different years, it will, as you say, fall or occur at different times. So these are like movable feasts. These are movable feasts. So although it's the 19th now, it might not be the 19th in the Western sense for many years. However, in the Hebraic sense, and according to the Kal Kidan, according to the word of, of, of promise, the word of covenant, according to the covenant, it is always begins on the 15th of that lunar month. So the reflected light of the moon helps to guide us in our holy days. Now, there's a, there's a point to be made about the Ethiopic days and certain Ethiopic holidays as well from the, excuse me, solar per perspective. But the calendar is a lunar solar. Now, it's important to check this out. But we didn't give a teaching. We really didn't give a full teaching. We plan on updating this. We wanted to go through the actual process and even learn and grow as we teach, not just to write up something that we didn't know by not experiencing it, but actually going through and experiencing it. And those of you and you all who are also seeking to do the same, you know that much one learns. This is where really true gnosis, gnosis comes from, is from that experience. You understand that that inner experience, also reflective of certain outer experiences, but chiefly it's that inner sense, in the inner sense. So this particular day is the Hosha'ina Rabbah, 
the whole shot in the Araba. Now, the whole shot in the Araba. This is the particular day where it's customary for the scrolls of Torah, the scrolls of the Torah, to be removed from the ark, from the tabot, during this procession. So you will see the OJs or the other Jews often during this particular time, the Hosha'ina Arapa, during the Shemeni At which is the eighth day, as well as on the Simchat Torah, walking around with the Torah scrolls and, and, and going around what they, the symbolic ark. Now we know that we as Ethiopian Hebrews have possession of the true ark, the ark of the covenant. And this is significant, especially with this particular um, holy day, the Hosha'ina Rabbah. Now, this particular book right here, and this is, this is our published copy that's now available. So if one wants to get a hard copy, go to www.lojsociety.org um, forward slash books. In this page, um, chapter, let's get to chapters 107, pages, um, there's a beautiful Talmud, Ethiopic Talmud, Talmudic teaching here on page uh, 209 of our particular copy, but it is um, chapter 107 concerning his entrance, concerning the Moshiach, the Moshiach's entrance into Jerusalem in glory. Now, if you recall, Christ rode on a donkey when he entered into Jerusalem. And when he rode on this donkey and entered into Jerusalem, the people cried out, Hosha'ina, Hosha'ina, son of David. Now, it's important to study this particular chapter, and hopefully we're going to touch on chapter 107. Now, see, for us, the Kivar and the Gans, and, and certain other selected books, even Macy's works, more as exegesis or commentaries, but this particular book, the Kivar and the Gans, in the translation of Queen of Sheba and only son Minulik, is for us our Ethiopic Talmud. And Talmud is a Hebraic word that basically translates to Timherit for us, and Timherit is teaching. Basically it means teaching. These are the other teachings that help us to understand the Word, to understand the Bible. And this particular chapter, chapter 107, concerning Christ's entrance into Jerusalem in glory, where he rode upon the donkey, and the people cried out, Hosha'ina, Hosha'ina. And the other Jews were very, very upset and displeased by it. It's very important and it's very interesting. So stay tuned when we touch on the Hosha'ina Araba of, of Christianity or the manifestation of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, where he rode on the donkey into Jerusalem. But this is all connected. So if you're in the New Testament and you read that, you might not understand the full context of it unless you go to the Old. The Old provides the foundation. Even our Lord and Savior himself said to, I think, the Sadducees and others that you do err not knowing the Scriptures nor the power of God. So to know the power of God, one must know the Scripture. The knowledge of the Scripture is prerequisite to even knowing the true God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because even the Moshiach, Yehoshua, himself said so. So he is our Rebbe. He is our Rabbi. He is our Great One. Now, now that we've touched on Leviticus chapter 23, and here we are consulting with the Wikipedia and giving certain annotated and certain additional notes, it says that in a few communities, some communities, a shofar or the ram's horn is sounded after each circuit. So in our gathering with the Ark of the Covenant, 
and remember every Ethiopian, true indigenous Ethiopian Beta Christian has an ark. And we, my brothers and sisters, and our communities as well, must also build symbolic arcs. But first, we need to study and show ourselves approved so we know exactly what we're doing and not just to follow the different imaginations of the Gentiles, but to learn as true Jews, as black Jews, as black Hebrews, as the once lost but now found Beta Israel. So the Torah scrolls are taken out. Now what's very interesting about this, and I don't know if I have this book over here. Let's see if it's Okay, I'm going to have it over here. But I'm sure you probably have seen the Ethiopian priest. And the Ethiopian priest with the scriptures or with something on their head. Similar to something like this. But much bigger. You, you've seen that before, right? Where they are going in procession. You see? where they are going in procession, but the book is much bigger than this particular book, the, the large book. That is like the scrolls. That's what they're carrying on their head. That's the indigenous Hebraicism, the indigenous African and Ethiopic Hebraicism. And this occurs on this particular day. And this particular day, my brothers and sisters, is the day that is known as the Hoshana Araba, the Hoshana Araba, or the Great, the Great Day. So the so the scrolls, and they have large these large books, and you see them with the large with it covered up, almost looking like where well, you can't tell what it is, but it sells the square, something that is square, and they have the shawl over their heads, and they're coming out in procession. That is what we are to do for this particular day and other days similar to and like it, liken unto it, my brothers and sisters. Now, the other Jews do it in their way, but the Ethiopic, from the Ethiopic, we learn the original and the indigenous. So this is a key for us. Now, there are seven, the seven circuits, they make seven circuits now uh, around the Ark of the Covenant. It says that this day is marked by a special synagogue service. And for us as Christian, we'll say a special Beta Christian. But for us in this time of Revelation, a special Beta Arastafari service, the Hosha'ina Rabbah in which seven circuits are made by the worshipers with their lulav and etrog, with different type of uh, trees, while the congregation, while the congregation, they recite the ha sha note. Now, it's important because in this, there are some interesting quotes in um, chapter 107 concerning his entrance, the Moshiach's entrance into Jerusalem. And this is what would be said. This is what would be, for example, let me give you a sample of this. Because many times when I'm learning about these things, I like to go into as much of the detail to at least become familiarized with what is in or what is about a certain matter. This might make I and I somewhat long-winded, but it, it helps, as they say, in the long run and sometimes even in the short run. So here we're going into the Kuvrat Negas, or the translation of the Queen of Sheba and only son Minulik, and this is concerning his entrance, his entrance into Jerusalem. And there's a note as well for the Hosha'ina Araba that prayers even by the other Jews and by true Hebrews are made that are messianic prayers for the Messiah's return or the Messiah's entrance 
and there's a, there's a key connection to it. Now, in 107, it says, concerning his entrance into, into Jerusalem in glory, it says, and the prophets, this is what the Haftarah, we have Haftarah, and the Ethiopic also has the Haftarah when it mentions the prophets, the Nabiyat, the Naveen, and the prophets have prophesied concerning his glorious entry into Jerusalem. And Isaiah, Yeshayahu, the prophet said, Shine thou, shine thou, Jerusalem. Thy light hath come, and the glory of God, of Elohim, Baruch Hu, hath risen upon thee. Then he gives a subscription, a footnote, LX, which is 60, Isaiah 60 and 1. Thus the prophet Zechariah, so Zechariah, prophesied and said, Rejoice, rejoice, daughter of Zion, daughter of Zion, and let Jerusalem shout for joy. And this day also much elilta, the elilta, the elilta, the lifting up, the exaltation would be heard. And now this quote from Zechariah is from Zechariah um, 9, chapter 9, verse 9. Thus David, Dawit, prophesied and said, out of the mouth of children and babes, or babes and suckling, if you please, thou hast prepared praise because of the enemy, so that thou mightest overthrow the enemy and the avenger. And this quote is from Psalm 8 and 2. Psalm 8 and 2. Thus Solomon, Solomon prophesied and said, The children are taught by God, by Elohim, Baruch Hu, and the peoples rejoice within thee. And there's a a quote they have here, and the quote they have here is Isaiah, again, Isaiah 54 and 13. Thus David his father prophesied and said, Blow ye the horn in Sion. Now we see the connection with the Hosha'ina Araba and the shofar that certain communities, they sound a shofar, Every, at every circuit, at every circuit that's made around the Ark of the Covenant in this particular um, service or agelgalot for this particular day. He says, blow ye the horn or the shofar, the horn, the melekot in the Sion on the day of the new moon, on the appointed day of our festival, for it is an ordinance. For Israel, this is an ordinance for Israel, for I and I and I. Even as philosophers of the West, once we get to know ourselves as Beta Israel and as Israelites and as Israel, then this is what we must do. We must learn to do. And once we learn, we must do and teach it to our children. It's very important. This is what we've been missing. Thus, Ezra, or Isra, the scribe, prophesied and said, Get ye out, make a festival in gladness. Check and make a note of the link of that particular line and the meaning of Simchat, Simchat Torah, which means the, the, the feast or the rejoicing of the law, the rejoicing of the Torah. So here, Isra says, Get ye out, make ye a festival in gladness, and say to the daughter of Zion, Rejoice thou, behold thy king hath come. Behold thy king, even the king of kings, Kedamawi Haila Salase, hath come. And in the next part of this, we have a very interesting collage and a couple of pictures uh, we didn't see this until very recently with his imperial majesty. Also, like the, the the Christ figure riding on like a donkey, riding on a donkey. And when we put that 
next to the pictures of Yeshua, some of the pictures of, of Jesus Christ, or at least the interpretations of Jesus Christ, both from the Ethiopic and from the Coptic, you'll see it in the next part of this particular series. That's what we're going to get into the other aspect of this. It's a very other aspect, and it's important, our Ethiopic Talmud and the Kibra Nagas, or the Queen of Sheba and only son Menulik, when we now understand our holy days, and we understand the Sabbaths, the weekly Sabbaths, the annual Sabbaths, and, and, and the order of it, and the meaning of it, then when we start to read the Kibra Nagas, the Queen of Sheba and only son Menulik, it starts to make perfect sense from an Hebraic perspective, because this is the Hebrew establishment in Ethiopia. This is holy Ethiopia. This is the part of Ethiopia that concerns I and I and I, because we and them are one. But not all Ethiopians. There's many careless Ethiopians. And the word even says that the careless Ethiopians will be slain by our father's sword. Even though they may have said amen, they did not do what would be true to their amen. But we'll touch on that um, last. We, we digress a little bit. But let's go forward to thus Isaiah the prophet, Yeshayahu, Esaias, the Nabi. He prophesied and said, Rejoice thou, Jerusalem, rejoice thou. Behold, thy king hath come riding upon an ass, riding upon a, a donkey. His reward is with him, and his work is before his face. And his work is before his face. Um, this is a quote from um, Isaiah, this is Isaiah uh, 62 and 11. Thus David the prophet prophesied and said, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of of the Lord, in the name of Adonai, in the name of Yahweh, Baruchu, blessed be he. And this is a quote from CXVIII or 118 and 26. Thus Yaakov, the son of Yishak, prophesied and said, Yehuda, thy brethren hath praised thee. Thine hand is upon the back of thine enemy, and the children of thy mother shall worship thee. And the dominion shall not diminish from Yehuda, and the government shall not depart from his kin, until he shall find him who hath been waited for, and who is the hope of the nations. And this is a quote from Genesis, Genesis 49, verses 8 to verse 10. And he also prophesied and said, His teeth are white as with snow, and his eyes are glad as with wine. And he shall wash his apparel in wine, and his tunic in the blood of clusters of grapes. And this is also taken from chapter 49 of Genesis, verses 11 and 12. And again he prophesied, saying, Yehuda, Judah, is a lion's whelp. Thou hast laid down, and thou hast slept. No one shall wake him up except him that hunteth until he findeth him. Rise up from thy strong place. And this is also from Genesis 49 and 9. Now all of these are Hosha'ina Araba appropriate, especially for us as Ethiopian Hebrews, as elect Arastafari. These are very appropriate for this particular time. Now, one thing we did not um, make mention is that this particular um, day or the services 
for this particular day um, usually have a morning service, but as we're moving more towards the evening, because the next part of this, the next part of this that um, we want to touch on is the Shemeni Atzeret. So the Shemeni Atzeret, um, as well as the Simchat Torah. So it's like some count it as the seventh day, the Hosha'in Araba, the eighth day, the Shemeni Atzeret, and the, some say the ninth day, which will be the Simchat Torah. This is how some look at it as these extended periods. And we can find biblical um, justification for that. There's good biblical justification, but the Simchat Torah is when we begin, when we would read the last or the 54th reading, as well as the first reading from Genesis or Barashit or Barashit. You understand, or Bemajimaria, Bamarinya. But let's just go on with this, just a little bit more, my brothers and sisters, because some of these quotes are what would be sung, what would be appropriate to be sung in congregational worship, um, what would be appropriate to be said while circuiting, making circuits around the ark and rejoicing on this particular Ho Sha'inna Rabbah. Because this is under, this is the overstanding of it, and again Yaakov blessed his son Yehuda, Judah, and said to him, "There is a king who shall go forth from thee and shall wash his apparel in wine, and glorious is the place of rest of the beloved." And now by now here's where here's here's where the kippur and the guest. The Queen of Sheba and the only son Minulik is, is very vital and is very important for us because here now it's going to explain that now by, quote, beloved, Christos or Christ, the Moshiach, is meant, and by Messiah, Christ is meant. So even here in chapter 107 of the Queen of Sheba and the only son Minulik or the glory of the kings, known Ethiopically as the Kibur Negesh, is explaining that beloved means Christ, and by Messiah, which is the Hebraic, Christos, which is the, the Greco, or the Greek, is meant. And Jesus, or Jesus, Yeshua, Yehoshua, meaneth Savior of the people, the Savior of the people. Now, the prophets and the Biyat mention Christ under a secret name, and they call him the Beloved. They call him the Beloved. This is very much key. And Isaiah, Esaias, Yeshayahu spake concerning his ascension in his prophecy saying, quote, On that day the Beloved shall come down from heaven, from the Shemayim, the Samayat, and shall choose for himself twelve apostles. Now, some think that this is a misquotation, the editor uh, Wallace Budge, but we'll prove that it's not a misquotation when you put it into its proper Ethiopic context. But it says, and again he said, quote, I have seen the ascension of the beloved son to the seventh heaven and the angels and the archangels receiving him, or Kabbalah, Kabbalah is to receive, receiving him, he being very much higher than they. And David said, the beloved is like the son of the unicorn. And some say the quote is 22, Psalm 22 and 20 is, is the quote. And again he said, thine and thine only one from the horns of the unicorn. And this is um, Psalm 22 and 20 and 21. And again he said, let my horn be exalted like that of the unicorn. And this is from Psalm 90, 92 
and ten. Now, horns meaneth the kingdoms of the world, and unicorn meaneth he who is over his kingdom whom no one can resist, for he is the governor of kings. He is the governor of kings. He destroyeth whom he will, and he setteth up whom he will. Even as David or David saith, I will make thee to rejoice more than those who are mighty through their horns. And they say compare Psalm 75 and 10. Compare this verse with Psalm 75 and 10, which meaneth, now this is why we call this our Ethiopic Talmud, because it gives certain quotes and then it gives an interpretation for studying, for learning, and that's key when we put it into the context of the scripture as well as the revelation, and especially for us in the Rastafari revelation. Now, it says, this particular verse, as David, even as David, Dawit saith, I will make thee to rejoice more than those who are mighty through their horns, which meaneth, quote, thou art nobler than the noble kings, and thou dost rejoice. So see, the same idea of the simchat, the desita, the same idea of rejoicing is connected and is key. Now, the beginning of this aspect, as we, we are into the culmination, this is now the culmination of the Feast of Tabernacles. Now, the Feast of Tabernacles, is very important because it's the feast of ingathering. It's actually the feast of those who will come out of Babylon will be coming out to the feast of tabernacles and to live in the promised land even seven years in a tabernacle mentality. You see, when the Bible talks about and he dwelt amongst us, the connection there is also tabernacles. So we have to really become wise, as it says, wise to salvation. In other words, not just to get the exoteric, but to get the esoteric and to study it and to see how it applies in, in a high density or high definition. You know, HD as it's a high definition and 3D to see the word and the reality in this three-dimensional it's triune dimensionality. Now, in Habakkuk, or in Bakom, or Habakkuk, prophesied saying, horns are in his hands. Horns are in his hands. Habakkuk, or in Bakom, chapter 3, verse 4. Now, many have asked, and we've sought to address it briefly elsewhere, what does this symbol of his majesty mean? If you go to Habakkuk chapter 3, verse uh, 4, you will see that it says that horns are in his hands. You, you see, the, the trinity hands of his majesty is very significant. One signification or signification of it that we will uh, reveal here is concerning what is said in Habakkuk. Habakkuk prophesied, saying, Horns are in his hands, and he hath placed the beloved in the strength of his power, of Hailu, Hailu, of his power, which meaneth the palms of the hand, wherein the life of all is held of the holder of the dominion of kings are pierced with nails which Christ, Christos, the beloved, our black Lord and Savior, the Moshiach, hath endured in the strength of his might. End quote. Now this is a very, very important connection and chapter with the 
Hoshana Rabba this particular day, this particular day, which is the culmination, the culmination of Sukkot, the culmination of tabernacles, the culmination of ingathering. So, my brothers and sisters, there's much more that's connected with this. Please stay tuned. More to come. Yahweh and Shalom Rastafari.